So I'm going to have a look at some um, colours of some copper complexes. So at the moment I've got some copper sulphate solution in these boiling tubes and at the moment it's got a water ligand around it which is giving us this um, blue colour. So the first thing I'm going to do is try adding some sodium hydroxide. Now the sodium hydroxide, because it's got OH minus ions in it, deprotonates some of those water ligands and we should observe a precipitate forming. And the precipitate will have the formula with four water ligands and two OH minus ligands, which means that overall the complex then has no charge, and that's why it forms this precipitate. It's not soluble anymore. Now what's going to be interesting is um, to compare what happens when we add excess, and I'm going to do some other, um, some other combinations of things as well, where I'll add a little bit and then excess to see what happens. So with excess sodium hydroxide, you can see that nothing very much is happening. I've still got my blue precipitate and there doesn't appear to be any evidence that it's becoming any more soluble. Okay, so I'm going to stop there and now try the second boiling tube and add ammonium hydroxide to that so that we can compare and contrast. Now, ammonium hydroxide has obviously got hydroxide ions in it as well. So when we add this, we should expect to see the same initial reaction as the hydroxide ions deprotonate the water ligands around my copper complex. So let's just add a little bit and see what happens. You can see, look there, we're genuinely getting that um, blue precipitate forming of um, copper two hydroxide, okay? Now, as I start adding excess of this, you might be able to see in the top that I'm getting a different color. I'm just going to give this a bit of a shake to make sure that it's really well distributed. There, so you can see um, I've got the blue precipitate now, um, which previously did not dissolve with adding excess sodium hydroxide. But as I continue to add ammonium hydroxide, you'll see that something very different is happening here. Okay, there's quite a different colour. Okay. And hopefully you can see that the precipitate has now dissolved. Okay, I've now got a really lovely deep royal blue solution. And what's happened there is that the ammonia in the ammonium hydroxide, because really ammonium hydroxide solution is an equilibrium mixture of ammonia gas and water and ammonium hydroxide ions. Um, and what's happening here is that the ammonia is acting as a ligand now and it's displacing the, the original water ligand. So I've now got what's called a ligand exchange reaction. So initially it formed the copper hydroxide, same as this tube, but then it went on to do a ligand exchange reaction and um, usually it's four ammonia ligands that cluster around the copper. Um, and we reinstate a complex that's got a two plus charge on it, which is why it becomes soluble again. I'm now going to have a look at what happens with um, a new ligand. So this is called EDTA. This is a hexadentate ligand. So that means it's got four, uh, not four, six different um, lone pairs of electrons that can form dative covalent bonds with, or coordinate bonds with my copper complex. So we're expecting with this one for the water to be, you can just see there's a subtle color change. So the water ligand is displaced and we have a ligand exchange with um, the EDTA. I might like to have a think about what would be the driving force for this, shifting six water ligands out and replacing them with one hexadentate ligand. Okay, so it's a very subtle colour change from the original blue. You probably can't see it very much on the film clip. Um, but it's got a slightly richer, slightly more intense blue colour, but nothing like as intense as with the um, ammonium ligand. Okay. Right, the final thing that I'm going to show you is adding some concentrated hydrochloric acid to the copper. Um, now, this one is very rich, obviously, with chloride ions because it's concentrated hy hydrochloric acid. Now, normally, when we're thinking about chloride ions as an anion, we tend to think of them as a very, fairly small anion in comparison with something like a sulphate ion or a nitrate ion. But when we're talking about ligand chemistry, um, a chloride ion is actually a rather large ligand compared to something like a water molecule or an OH- or even an ammonia molecule. It's, it's comparatively large um, compared to those. So when we start trying to do ligand exchanges with chloride ions, we find that there isn't enough room to fix 
to fit six chloride ions around the copper or central copper ion. So this one will form a, a four coordinate um, complex. So it will be um, copper with four chloride ligands around it and that's all that it can fit around it. Um, that will fit in the test tube that we or chopper that works. Let's see how that works. So I was just saying, it, you can get four chloride ligands around that central copper, um, the, um, copper iron, um, and it has a slightly different shape to it. It will have a tetrahedral shape to it rather than an octahedral shape. But what's interesting here is the colour. So, so as I add my concentrated hydrochloric acid to it, okay, look at what's happening to the colour. green but I think that's because I've got a mixture of the new complex and some of the old copper sulfate that hasn't actually done the ligand exchange yet so I'm going to keep adding concentrated hydrochloric acid to it until I get the final color that I know it should be which I think I'm getting to now is a sort of yellow color yeah it's really unusual for um, copper because Everything that we've seen up till now with copper has had it either a sort of blue or a green colour. Now you can see we've got this rather unpleasant sort of yellowy, strong yellowy colour to our um, copper complex. Okay, and that's really characteristic of um, this copper with four chloride ligands around it.